welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? I'm your host, Karen E. Osborne, author of women's fiction, suspense, mystery. I've written uh, Getting It Right, Tangled Lies, Reckonings, and my first historical fiction, suspense book, is coming out in September. And we are so both my guest, Corliss Carraza, and I are so glad you're here. Hi, Corliss. Hello, Karen, and I'm so happy to be talking with you. This is wonderful. Well, we are looking forward to it, and we hope you are as well. So um, Corliss is, a, aren't you curious about her name? We're going <laughs> to ask her about that. We're going to ask her about that. But she <laughs> is, it's, it's beautiful, but interesting, right? She is a former teacher. She's a writer. She's a blogger. And she's the author of Cut Open the Sky. Wow. I mean, what a title. We're going to ask her about that, too. And <laughs> the story of an extraordinary woman, Connie Castro Jackson. And we're going to hear all about it. And we're just so glad. We can't wait. Can't wait to get started. So we have to just tell everybody about your name. We have to just start there. Do we start there? We do. We need to start there. Tell us, <laughs> tell the audience a little bit about Corliss Carraza, the name. It sounds like something in a fiction book. <laughs> oh boy, that's pretty cool. Actually, it is um, my father chose that name. He loved a comic strip uh, called Corliss Archer. And um, I blogged it on my excuse me, on my website, and told the story of it. It's too long to probably tell it all now, but um, he loved the name Corliss. So um, evidently my mom didn't have veto rights, so she wouldn't have put me through having to spell and explain my name all my life. Not that I mind now, but when I was a kid, it was tough. Um, and so I, I was named Corliss, and then my middle name is Jean, like a boy, G-E-N-E, because I had a beloved aunt, my dad's sister. They wanted to name me after her. Her name was Gina, G-E-N-A. But my mom felt that was too many syllables. So um, shortened it. So I have a comic strip first name, a boy's middle name, <clears throat> very Irish maiden name, Griffin. And now um i think my husband's name goes really well my my married last name goes well with the first one so it does and so but when we uh, wrap up today so stay with us uh corliss will tell you where you can find that blog uh, i'm gonna go read it i love <laughs> I, I can't wait to read it <laughs> tell us a little bit about your writing journey how did you decide to write about other living people real people Oh my gosh. So I loved writing. I loved words. When I was a little kid, before I had mastered the alphabet, I used to write stories in pictures, kind of like a pictograph. And <clears throat> excuse me. And then um, my favorite, my favorite assignments in elementary school, all the way up through high school were writing assignments. And then in college, I majored in English. Um, loved it. I wrote several, I wrote a lot of things, several bits and pieces, um, but never enough to think about publishing them. I was just kind of blowing right through, enjoying myself um, and really enjoying my major. Uh, and then I earned a teaching credential and taught elementary um, through uh, three or four of the grades of elementary, teaching them to write. It was, it, I loved it. It was so much fun. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It was mostly third grade. I loved words and I loved being with kids. So it worked out really, really well. I had several story starts um, and I knew I wanted to write them and fill them out when I had time. I've always been interested in people and how they think and why they think that, what their home life is like, what's their background. I was curious about everyone. Um, and then and wondering what their stories might be. And then I met Connie Castro Jackson. Mm. And my other stories went to the end of the queue <laughs> in a heartbeat. Our husbands were friends and they introduced us <clears throat> and she invited me to join her meditation classes. 
And um, we eventually became great pals. And one day she was telling me some of her stories. We had gone out to lunch and we, and, I, and I was just amazed at what she had to tell me. So um, it, it, she, she said, I said, Connie, we, you have to get these stories written down before they're lost. The, you, no, this is incredible. And she said, yeah, I know. They need to be written down and you're going to do it. Wow. Said, oh, you bet. <laughs> so that's how we got started. Um, and right in the beginning, you know, the whole time we were working on this, I was writing her story and she was giving me a PhD in spirituality. I learned so mm -hmm. much from that little tiny woman. Um, and she, uh, when she first told me the story that the book starts out with, uh, where she was on her back porch and looked over at the barn area and there was a family just enjoying themselves, but she could see through them. She was six years old and she realized something was different about her. Mm. So um, then to go on a little bit, I've, I've always been interested in the metaphysical since childhood, very young. I had what my family called ghost friends. They were my buddies. They lived in a shed out at my, the back of my neighbor's house and played with me every day. We were, it was just fun. I can't tell you what they looked like. I don't even know if I knew, I just knew they were there. Um, and then when I was six, I was hospitalized uh, with uh, meningitis and I could, the, I had the experience of floating above myself, watching the doctor do the spinal taps and seeing the nurses scootle around. And, and I thought, oh, there's something something different in this world and i tried to uh my parents were great about it um but nobody really understood it overactive imagination so here i am talking to this woman who's giving me these wonderful stories and and i'm connecting with her and they align with with your experiences yes that's, that's amazing yeah. that's that is wonderful it was I, so meant to be yeah, it was it was a just meant to be uh, yeah. experience. So, um, well, a couple of things. So you decided to tell. She asked you. She chose you. Yeah. To to tell her story. Yes. And when you were writing it, did did you guys ever have disagreements or, you know, you sort of sort going this way and Connie sort that oh, way or. Was it That's all just like question. smooth? That's a great question. We never disagreed, never got upset with each other once. In fact, laughter was our go-to. We, She's so funny. Was We lost her two years ago. So, um, But the thing was, uh, Connie had a very limited vocabulary. She uh, had didn't finish high school. And she and her family were so, worked so hard just staying alive in their in their lifetime that education wasn't a priority she knew she had a limited vocabulary and i had a limited understanding of what she knew so uh, this, we the would, metaphysical world and the spiritual yes, world yes mm -hmm. so she and i would spend time sometimes a couple of hours on one paragraph so I'd make sure I understood what she was teaching me. Mm. And then I would use her words. I tried to make the whole book in her, and her in voice, the person at her voice completely. Mm. Um, but that's the only, it wasn't even a rub. It was fascinating to me. Yeah. How, what was the time frame? How long did it take you guys to do this? Probably about four or five years. Yeah. Because I was, when we started it, um, I was still working full time. Mm -hmm. And so it was really hard to find the time, but oh my gosh, you know, how wonderful it was when we did find that time. It was, yeah. So how did you come up with cut open the sky? Where, did, where did that come from? It's a, I just love that title. It, it, you know, if I, when you see that a book, you know, titles just grab you and that one really is grabbing. 
Oh, thank you. Well, um, that was <clears throat> my editor suggested that I pull the title out of the text. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, oh, okay. So that's what I did. And I'm reluctant to give out that secret of where it is and what it's all about, because I love the reader uh, to discover it. it and discover it themselves. <laughs> and the only hint that I'm, that I'm giving is that it's towards the end, <laughs> but. Well, isn't um, that clever of you? <laughs> <laughs> it now really... I have to read the whole book if I want to know what the title will be. Yes, you do. <laughs> That's very good. I love that. That is very cool. <laughs> so here you were spending five years, you put your own stories aside and spending this time for five years telling someone else's story. Have you ever thought about telling your own story in a, in a memoir or something like that? Well, yes. And I have a novel that's in the works and, um, I'm hoping to have it ready to be pitched by at least after summer. Um, and it's it's still in its infancy, so I can't say a lot about it, other than there are a lot of my personal stories in it. And mm. so it will be a novel. Um, it's not a biography uh, or an autobiography, but there are some stories that I really, really want to get out there. I really want to share. Um, and is it, does it have a lot of the spirituality aspects? It has snippets of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we, and then I, I tell, we, I'm so used to saying we with Connie, now I'm on my own. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it touches on uh, things that are going on today. And it touches on things. It's a, a woman's um, story and a lot of problems that come up with women and, and who we are and, um, I hate to say too much because I haven't really gelled it. Um, yeah, yeah. it's it. a work in progress. And who knows yeah. where who knows where your characters will take you? Too <laughs> soon to know where they'll where they'll take you. You know, when you were talking about um being, you know, above yourself and seeing the the doctors and the nurses and and then having friends, you know, uh, that were outside, uh, that is both those are all wonderful examples of of um, metaphysical things, but it also is the life of an author because we always see characters and have them talking to us. And, and yes. Have, yes, you know, it, while you were saying it, I was thinking, well, yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah, you get it. it. Makes perfect sense to me. So one of the things that a lot of authors, you know, I have so many author friends and this show has introduced me to so many amazing, amazing authors. And one of the things that some of them are so excited about the marketing aspects, which I find surprising, <laughs> but like my friend, <laughs> my friend, Grace Salmon, who uh, wrote a wonderful novel, but she is such an entrepreneur and she's helping other authors um, get their books out. And, you know, and I say, I don't have, I, I have all this stuff in my head, all these things I have to write. I don't have time for marketing. Kind of how do you deal with that balance of, of writing and, and then marketing um, cut open the sky? Well, I'll tell you, um, frankly, I'm terrible at marketing. <laughs> at the social media, I'm getting better, but mm -hmm. boy, it has been a hill to climb. Um, I really love uh, blogging and writing for the website. And I have a, a newsletter that can be signed up for through my website. I like I like all that because that's just more writing. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the rest of it is just hard for me to do and I have quite a few people that are helping me along my editor has been wonderful and patient and uh, uh but it's hard I I just really uh I just I struggle but I've created um a, a chart of everything I need to do and it has a a uh, calendar below it it's color coded oh, cool. and so that chart tells me where to go why I'm doing it how often I need to do it 
and how how I need to approach it. And then the calendar's color coded. So, oh, okay, this Thursday I need to get that written and posted. That's you very know. good. So you really have a marketing plan. I do because yeah. I'm visual. I'm a, and I think most authors are. We're even though we we're visual inside our heads most of the time. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. Yeah. So, um, you, so you told us about what you're working on uh, that's new coming up. Have you ever looked back on your stories that you were writing before you put them down? Uh, after you met Connie, is there is there some good stuff back there that you might uh, bring forward? Yes. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, I. There are things, and uh, um, you know, in in my vision, I have uh, a children's book that I I want to complete, and mm. um, I have four little grandkids, and I've written a book for each of them. Not nothing really publishable, but you know, I mean, that oh, that's so sweet. That's wonderful, and I I love that, and then who knows from there you know that i have some snippets and some i have a mystery started and i just just have to see where where it goes where it goes excellent that sounds wonderful so we always like to uh, include recommendations of books so that we have so many readers uh, on there and of course we want them to read cut open the sky but we also would love to hear if you have some a couple of books that you could recommend to everybody oh my gosh you know i could go on <laughs> about this you're not allowed <laughs> <laughs> but just right off right off the top barbara king solver i love oh. everything she's ever yes written. yes and <laughs> her new one demon copperfield i just finished it there were times it was, uh, well, it, it, she's it's so well written, and she gives readers a window into the depth of our problem, of our illegal pharma problems, and the ugly side of foster care and things that, that I know I personally think, oh, I don't you know what to even think about this. Um, then there's Colson Whitehead, who the Underground Railroad. He's mm -hmm. just plain good. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. everything he's written, I've devoured. Um, Jagged Edge of the Sky is a great book by Paula Marie Coomer. That woman, I don't know that one. Oh my gosh! Yeah, she, she can put more in a paragraph than most of us, you know, could put in a page. Just say her just, name again. Paula Marie Coomer, C O O M E R, is her is the author name, and Jagged Edge of the Sky mm, is okay. her book. It's been out for a long time, but it's it's worth it oh my gosh and then there's um uh jody picult i love everything oh, she writes she's wonderful uh, yes leaving time about the elephants and how smart and intuitive wasn't that are. an amazing amazing book and just yes. giving us such a, a a reminder that these are living beings with families and feelings and they yes. grieve and that yeah. was an amazing that was just an amazing amazing book I agree with you on that 100 yeah. percent well thank you these have been wonderful wonderful um recommendations for all of you how now you mentioned your website a couple of times but could you just tell everybody how they can find you they can find me at www.corliscarraza.com so they could spell my name. They can. <laughs> well, it's going to be spelled right under this video and with a link. So they, they will be able to find you and do sign up for Corliss's um, websites so that you can know what's going on and where things are going. Yeah. And, and I hope you will also follow me on Instagram. And uh, right now, when this show is uh, being aired, uh, Reckonings will still be on an Instagram tour. Who knew ah, there was such a thing? Nice. But it's it's going really well. And, yeah. and so you can, you can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on YouTube. And you can find me on my website, KarenEOsborne.com. Thank you so much for being with us. And thank you, Corliss. This has been just a delight. Oh. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Karen. Thank you.